I have a question regarding communion. Is it acceptable to use grape juice instead of wine? Is it actually the blood of Christ, or does the grape juice negate that? If the latter, did I partake of communion wrongly when I took grape juice bread at the LCMS church near me recently? I didn't know it was grape juice instead of wine when I partook. My first inclination is that yes, Christ's blood and body were present because the word of God is efficacious and to say that it is hindered by grape juice seems silly. Thanks in advance, Daniel. Yeah, cool. Good question. Disagree with solution. Um, Not because your theology is wrong when you talk about that the efficaciousness of the Word of God. You're absolutely correct about the efficaciousness of the Word of God. The question is, at what point have you changed the Word of God so it's no longer the Word of God? So if God says, hey, Moses, take two tablets of stone, craft them, and write ten commandments on them, I'll write with my own finger on them, and Moses brings him two tablets of wood, how's that go with God, right? Everything we know about God. When, when he's like, okay, so like this. And we're like, oh, like this? And he's like, no, <laughs> you know, fire, <laughs> uh, unholy fire, right? So, so the thing is, if we're going to take the last will and testament of the Lord, Jesus Christ, the King, the one and only, ascended and risen now, yes, reigning, my actual liege, Lord have mercy, the one to whom I submit and against whom the world cowers in fear, huh? If we're going to take his last will and testament seriously, well then, I don't think we should change anything we don't have to change. And we've got to change locations. We can't meet in the upper room. We don't even know where it was. Um, Vintage of wine, air temperature in the room. The Bible doesn't speak about any of these things. There's no words for these things. But there's a couple words. And one of them is the word weenos. And I know that sounds funny, weenos. But if you just kind of hear it as Greek and not as English, okay? It's Greek, weenos. But it is English. We just pronounce it really weird. We pronounce weenos as wine. That's the word in the Greek. It's the only word you have in the ancient world for the fruit of the vine, okay? So so when you're going to drink thing the juice of grapes you're always going to have the word wine being the word used and there's a reason for that and it's not because they hadn't thought up a way to talk about juice or how great juice is they didn't have juice there was no such thing as juice if you wanted grape juice you had to drink it from the grape the day they're mashing it and normally they wouldn't do that you would be spoiling the wine that way <laughs> So what they did instead was they put the juice immediately into skins, where within a day you would have a low level of wine, but it really wasn't that great. It certainly wasn't pasteurized. It would eventually either go bad or you could again ferment it with care and have it turn into wine. And the new wine, that'd be the cheap wine. That'd be what the um, you would drink if you really wanted to get drunk. And then the old wine, well, that would be the good wine, which I guess if you're wealthy, you could drink and get drunk on. But by and large, you would say for significant events. So I don't know, like Passover. <laughs> You know, and I don't know what kind of wine Jesus used or had that day. So, but what I do know is that he had to have wine because there was no such thing as pasteurization. In fact, pasteurization, this gets so much better. I've said this before on this show, channel, world, I don't know. Can you ever say it enough? The history's out there. Go check it out on Wikipedia. It's, it's right there. Pasteurization is developed by a gentleman named Welch. You may have heard of Welch's grape juice, which you probably didn't get on the back of the label. Was that he was a he was a teetotaler? He was a teetotaling. Excuse me. He was a teetotaling Protestant pastor. That means he was an anti-alcohol crusading. What? What do you call it? Social justice warrior. Liberal. Well, I don't know. Certainly on the sacraments, liberal view, materialistic view, progressive Protestant activist pastor develops pasteurization so that he can remove wine from the Lord's Supper. That's why we have grape juice. So that we can remove wine from the Lord's Supper. Now, forgive me if at this point in history, I'm like, yeah, let's just not do that one then. (laughs) Maybe that was the devil's play all along. You think? And, and here, here's the thing. Could, could Jesus' words on the night he was betrayed delivered to us over grape juice pasteurized by Welsh himself actually be the body and blood of Jesus? Well, is, is God Almighty and omnipotent? Yes, absolutely. Could actually be the body and blood of Jesus. But do we know that it is? 
And that's where your answer, even if it's like, well, I pretty think I think so. It's my opinion that, well, then it's what? Oh, it's your opinion. So do we know? No, we do not know that it is. And so that 1% or less smidgen of doubt, right there at this is his blood. You got the body, but you didn't get the blood. Maybe, maybe you did. Ah, what the hey? I mean, is that is that the approach? Or is it like, well, how about we be sure because you know it's the gospel. <laughs> it's the life of your eternal reality. Let's let's be certain on this thing and not institute doubt. For what reason and to what end? To what end do we need grape juice in the supper for anybody? And if your answer is the alcoholic, I say a glass of water with a drop of wine in it will do just fine. So there's answers, there's always answers, and then there's the everlasting, diabolically subtle, behind-the-scenes, never-forward argument, attack of the devil, which he just wants to divide that meal from any angle that he can.